So welcome to the webinar from the IIBA Brussels chapter. And today we wanted to give you more insights on how to turn ideas into excellence. But first of all, I would like to thank our sponsor, uh, Quezu Services. And today uh, we are welcoming uh, John Fraser, uh, the BA practice lead of North Highlands Process and Business Analysis Capability and certified business analysis professional. John brings 15 years of uh, experience with a proven track record of a success as a leader in IT modernization business process improvement, change management initiatives in multiple industries. John is a business analysis and transformation leader, certified coach, mentor, keynote speaker, focused on purpose, impact, and organizational success. And our second speaker is uh, Will Pitchers. Uh, he has nearly a decade of experience delivering complex digital transformation projects and programs across a diverse range of industries. He sits within the leadership team for North Highlands Process and Business Analysis Capability, and has a proven track recorded for leading high performance performing teams. He specializes in operational improvement, business analysis, process architecture development, project management, agile change management, vendor selection support, and business process design and governance. Unfortunately, our uh, third speaker of the day, Shane Lacani, uh, cannot make it, but nevertheless, I think that uh, it wouldn't be a problem. <laughs> so uh, I would say, John, Will, uh, the floor is yours. I will stop sharing. That's good stuff. Thank you very much. Um, we're going to get situated, but thank you for taking time to join us today. Um, we are missing our our, our third member of the of the show, but you know he had he's out with good reason. Uh, he had he had a beautiful young man, a little boy. Um, so he's now a daddy again. So he's out for so for good reason. So we gave him the day off. <laughs> Bear with me. It's not that. It's very um, what's going to the slides? Is it? Um, thank you for giving us the intro, Christoph. Um, it's worth. Should we just speak a little bit about North Highland, John, and then we'll just give a little bit more about ourselves. Just want to try and get this. Yeah, sure. So um, thank you again, like I mentioned. So we ha we've had opportunity to kind of uh, talk about what we want to talk, our, our topic today. But our focus is, you know, North Highland itself um, is an organization that's headquartered in Atlanta um, uh, with multiple offices throughout the United, throughout the, the globe. Um, we have over 3,000 employees um, in multiple offices. Um, I represent the U.S. side of things, and and um, Will and Shane would be representing the, our London office. And we've had the opportunity to be with the firm. I, I guess you know, Will and I just found us out. We've been with the firm close to four years now. <laughs> um, I hit my four-year anniversary. He, he hit his four years anniversary in April, um, and Shane has been here a little bit over two plus years as well. Um, but overall, you know, one of the biggest things we wanted to talk to you about today is our ideas into excellence and, you know, how can we turn ideas into excellent and tangible output? So today's discussion um, is going to be a, a, a John and Will and, and, and Shane talk uh, where it's collaborative, informative, and most, and most of all, focusing on being enlightening. Um, you know, we talk about these things as, uh, you know, innovation being an outcome of being creative, but you know, creativity is a is considered a buzzword, and honestly, creativity is part of human nature. And in a nutshell, the way we think about things within North Highland and how we work collaboratively, um, you know, that's exactly what we're looking for: new ideas. And that's exactly what we get an opportunity within North Highland in our environment to do just that, and that is to create. And that is pretty much the secret sauce of it: is that we have an opportunity to build this into a habit, a consistent effort. And having the opportunity to do so, it allows innovation to rise. And you know, creativity breeds innovation. And as we start talking about today's discussion, we want to make sure it's a couple things. It's collaborative and informative. And if there's a question that you have to ask, we have no problem stopping so we can talk about it. So I'm going to pass it to my good buddy, Will, and I'll let him take away. Cool. So um, firstly, can everyone see the screen OK? So thank you, John, for kicking us off. And Christoph, um, we were going to do an intro for ourselves. But Thank you very much. You've covered that. Um, 
as it's probably emphasize between myself, John and Shane, we have a wealth of experience in the sort of business analysis realm. Um, not going to go into our experience because Christoph covered that off. Um, I think, see, John talks about North Highland and the sort of creativity we encourage there. But I think for those of you that don't know, I thought we'd just give a couple of lines about North Highland as well. Um, we are a sort of US owned company, um, an employee owned company. Um, we operate within the UK and US primarily. Um, we do have clients within European markets as well. Um, and we're, we are seen as one of these sort of leading change and transformation consultancies um, across the globe. Um, and as John emphasized earlier, we are also a corporate member of IIBA, one of the reasons we're here today. Um, slide. Um, so what we actually wanted to talk about today, so as you can tell from the title, is ideas into excellence. But what does that actually mean? So what we really wanted to talk around was sort of the generation of ideas, um, how those are important to you as BAs, you as professionals, or to you within your organisations or consultancies that you work for. Um, and it's not just the generation of ideas, it's actually how do you turn these ideas into something tangible? Um, and what we want to take you through as well is the journey we've taken as North Highland. Um, we're not saying this is something you need to do or this is something you have to follow to foster sort of idea generation and turning this into a reality this is just what we've done and we found useful and hopefully acts give some pointers um, that you might be able to take away or hopefully be able to take away um, we also wanted to touch on um, the skills we've used to build the structure um, so obviously as this is for IBA, we wanted to relate it back to all those good sort of core BA skills or business analysis skills we have. And then what we'll sort of end on is sort of tips and tricks and sort of some of the softer stuff we've used to help embed sort of innovative behaviours within the organisation. So I'll hand over to John very briefly. Um, we thought it would be a good idea um, to collect any objectives people might have um, from the session. Um, we can then reflect back at the end, see if we've met those. And hopefully if we've not, then we can try and answer any objectives or questions. Um, and one final point as well. Um, we want to treat this as a conversation or a talk. So if you do have questions, um, please feel free to ask as we're going or drop them into the message box. Um, but we also do have some dedicated time at the end for Q&A as well, if you can wait until then. Um, I think you need to stop sharing, Will, so I can just start doing it. Sure. Thanks, sir. Appreciate that. So as Will got an opportunity to kind of talk that through, talk with that over with you guys, you know, one of the things we want to make sure is that we, you know, there's a very big takeaway from our discussion. And I'm, I'll be curious to find out for those that are attending today, if you can kind of shoot some things out that you would like us, that you would like to take away from today's session that we can add to this list to make sure we get back to it. We practice what we preach when we talk about collaboration and we wanted to hear a little bit from you. So I'd like to, if you have something out there, please shoot it out into the chat. If not, feel free to say it and I can type it into our, into our notepad. So I'm gonna shoot, I'm gonna start off with Ms. Kimberly Barton Wright. Was there anything else you'd like to take away from um, today's session? Hi, John. Thank you. Um, for me, I really am wanting to listen and take in all of the tips and tricks that can be offered to me because I'm looking to transition uh, into a new role soon. So I'm here to really listen today. Okay. And congratulations on that MBA. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, um, let's go down. Anybody else would like to chime in before I start picking names? How about Philippe, Mr. Hendrick? How you doing, sir? Would you like to learn today about today's session? Um, what do I like to learn? I'm doing lots of work on innovation, so I'm always keen to find out new techniques to, uh, indeed, as you say, make it tangible, uh, turn fluffy. Uh, thoughts into something that actually can be tested in the outside world. Okay, thank you, sir. Ms. Heather, what would you like to learn today? 
just here to absorb whatever I can from the session. Looking forward to it. Thank you. Okay. How about Mr. Leopold? Would you like to learn from today's session? Well, John, I'm interested in what constitutes excellence. Got it. How do you define excellence? Okay. Irina, would you like to learn today? Anybody have anything that they would like to learn? I can add to the list. Feel free to jump in, take it off mute, and, and I'll add it to the list. Marianne from Canada, would you like to learn from today's session? Uh, we're just starting up our BA office. We have no templates, no processes, no procedures. And the question is where to start. Okay, where to start? I like that. Where to start? Oh, hopefully this should be quite useful. Um, uh, there's one final one in the chat, John, which is I would like to learn about the North Island framework. Okay, North Island. Okay, got it. Let me open that up there. North Island framework. Got it. So I think the structured stuff will uh, cover out oh, greater insights into BA communities, another one. So with that, I'm gonna pass it over to, uh, to Will to kind of, I'll stop sharing and allow him to share again and we'll continue on the session. Thank you very much for the input and I will add tools and techniques to that as well. Thank you very much. Um, so actually another one for the audience as well. So um, turning ideas into reality, um, want to sort of put it to the audience why do people think this is important please shout out don't worry about putting it in the chat um and if there's not anything i'll move on very quickly and i i'll i'll you know will i'll sit there and say philippe said a very good one um you know making things tangible um turning the fluffy into reality um uh to kind of keep that level of innovation and, and transition for ideas so there's something that i thought was very very keen to what we're going to talk about today yeah, I think, I think that hits the nail on the head, really, doesn't it? So I've jumped, we put together some quotes that um, we thought were quite pertinent to this concept of turning ideas into reality. And there's two that I really like. For my fav <laughs> my favourite one is from Thomas Edison, which is the value of an idea lies in that. <coughs> my voice is going, the actual use, the actual um, idea lies in the, using it. Um, and then we have one from Theodore Levitt, which is, Creativity is thinking of new things. Innovation is actually doing things, which I think touches on some of the points we made earlier. Um, and I guess, why is this important to our profession? Um, I'm conscious of time, so I was going to put that to the audience. Um, but I think overall, it leads to the introduction of new and better solutions, better ways of working, um, or ways to address problems as well. And I, I think as business and as professionals, um, this is sort of foundation for us in our global community going forwards. Um, sort of being able to constantly innovate and deliver on ideas. So moving on. So the actual generation of ideas. Um, so what we wanted to talk around now is the actual journey we've gone through in North Highland and how we sort of, um, why we wanted to speak about this topic. Because I think it might be the same for you within your respective organisations or you as individuals. Um, we found in North Highland that actually generating ideas has not been an issue. As a company, we provide like a super open, super transparent, collegiate environment where all our communities, whether it's within our process and business analysis capability, or within our wider North Highland sort of community, everyone is free to generate ideas. Um, whether that's upwards or downwards. I mean, the issue we encountered was that, we, as we were saying before, we're great at generating these ideas, but we weren't so good at implementing them. It's, and our ideas, they weren't necessarily refined, um, they weren't focused in the right way. So when I say focused in the right way, they weren't necessarily aligned to what we as a company wants to do. Um, and as they weren't refined, it was making them hard to be implemented. Um, and, what we're then going to talk about is the actual structure we put in place to sort of help our community deliver those ideas and actually make them tangible. Um, and as was emphasized earlier, how do we make these ideas not just tangible, but how do we make them excellent? So before we jump into the actual structure, um, we're going to talk about the great BA skills we used, all the skills we probably all have, um, well, I assume we have, um, which helped us um, from a starting point, which for us, starting point is analysis. Um, 
And sorry, one thing I will note as well is as we're going through, um, we've got the slides we will share at the end. Um, we have put further reading points as well. Um, so I won't cover those, but when the pack does go around, please feel free to click on those because it will give um, other tips and pointers as well. Um, so as I was saying before, the starting point before we could actually implement a structure was um, using our sort of great analysis skills to look at what is the actual problem um, and where can we go from there. Um, so as I was saying before, the problem we had was coming up with loads of ideas, but how do we implement them? too many ideas, lack of focus and minimal prioritisation. Other things we identified as well, individuals weren't necessarily empowered and they weren't able to own these ideas and deliver them. And one of the things we identified was that we had this wealth of ideas and we had one big team trying to deliver a massive backlog of ideas that weren't necessarily prioritised or aligned. Um, and as part of this analysis as well, what we also discovered was um, people not necessarily being engaged with the community, um, and people going through sort of top class training, whether it's IIBA aligned, tra IIBA aligned training or whether it's things such as agile or scrum related training. So what we wanted to do is try and address some of these issues. So moving forward through sort of analysis, um, what we wanted to do was understand how we could break this work down into let's say more manageable chunks. Um, so where we started off was working with our community and people that wanted to be involved because we thought it was really important to make sure that it's not just a small group who's doing it, it's everyone within the community that wants to participate is able to contribute to the analysis and to the suggestion of this new structure. So our starting point was looking at the life cycle of the business analysis, a business analyst at North Highland. So we did numerous whiteboarding sessions, um, looked at sort of the minutiae of what we do and this I think I can't remember if you can recall John I think we came out with maybe 40 activities sure. um, and obviously um, <laughs> clustering 40 act or breaking 40 <laughs> activities into teams is not going to be feasible you've got far too many teams there so what we then did was group these um, activities into clusters so these clusters could have been focused on specific areas um, such as maybe um, well, obviously business analysis but there could have been things such as business architecture or um, a community team or a team dedicated to feedback. Um, is there anything you want to add John? From oh I think I, I think we've had the opportunity where you know within the framework within North Highland's environment when initial the, the initial process has started Will was one of the very big, the first architects on the opportunity to kind of cluster these things together to, we had so many people, we have 160 people in our capability and we had engagement levels was reasonably okay, um, but they could have been better because one of the things that you'll get from people such as a Heather Pease, myself, Will Pitchers, um, we have some, quite a few people from North Highland on today that, you know, we have ideas and, you know, a lot of the ideas to what Will's point is like, we're not coming up. And they were not rising to the top and having the ability to kind of start structuring it a little bit um, was in the beginning, in the, in the early stages, allowed us to start getting things together and having a game plan. And as you know, Will's going to talk a little bit more about what we've done, but leveraging the skills that we all had in place. And as a business analyst, analyst at North Highland, one of the biggest things that we do share, we do have transparency, but we needed to have another level to help our business change. And that has resulted in nothing but great things. So I'm going to let Will kind of take it back on to that point. And I, I think on the engagement point, obviously we talked about earlier about we do have a really open environment in North Highland where people can um, be free to express their opinions and ideas. But I think the problem we had before was that there was, because of the way we were set up, it was very much focused on a small group of people, wasn't it, trying to generate these ideas and deliver it. Mm -hmm. um, and that was, as we were saying, based on this analysis, we, we saw that actually we need to break it into smaller groups so that we can have different owners for different elements, which actually empowers people more. Um, so I'll move on to the other slide because I'm sort of crossing into that territory anyway. Um, so after the analysis we did, um, and one thing I didn't talk about was um, what we did actually do when we were breaking down. We used an approach called storyboarding, which I'm sure many of you are familiar with. 
Um, but yes, after doing analysis, we came to the conclusion that we needed to break into small agile teams. So based on the clusters we put together, we broke these down into, uh, off the top of my head, it was either nine or 10 clusters. Um, and then we used, um, and I've put a link down here, um, as an influence, the model Spotify implemented um, back in 2012, um, which was how they scaled their Agile teams. They used what were known as squads to implement um, their ideas and initiatives. Um, so backtracking to the point I said earlier about one of the things um, we found our community wasn't necessarily getting to do was implement or use some of the training um, they had been provided. So whether that's in Scrum or as a product owner. So we thought the most suitable methodology and based on the Spotify reference did was to implement a Scrum type approach to delivering our initiatives. So the squads um, we set up had their own product owners, Scrum masters and various team members. Um, so each squad was given autonomy to generate their own ideas and then have their own backlog and break that backlog into sort of manageable chunks. So again, assuming for all this isn't rocket science, it's just um, using the great training and experience we've got to actually apply it to our own organization rather than either a client or a project. Um, again, the most important thing for us as well was just ensuring that at every point throughout this, through the analysis, through the communication and through the building of the new structure, it was ensuring that every member of our community, if they wished, um, was involved and had a voice. Um, so got the buy-in and it made sure that everyone felt their voice was important. Um, what I'm not gonna touch on too much now is um, the structure we have now. It is also aligned to our, cap we have a vis vision for our capability, the direction we want to go, but we also have, um, as any good organisation does, a vision for our companies, North Highland. Um, and we made sure all the activities we did, whether it's through backlog refinement or our overall aims, were aligned to that vision. But I'm, as I said, I'm not going to touch on that too much because John's going to talk about that a bit further mm -hmm. on. Cool. So um, I'll hand over to John, who is going to talk for our value streams. So, um, yep. So yeah. thank, you, thank you, Will. Oh, so I was just going to say as well, because I've talked about squads and this concept of value streams is like, it's where we are now. So the squads was the precursor. We're obviously going to cover this now. Yeah. So, so as you mentioned that, you know, the pod and, and the pod and, pod and squads were a really big thing was you had an opportunity to look at what we kind of started from in the beginning. Um, and one of the biggest things that we've got opportunity, you'll sit there and see how we kind of restructured some of those squads into key areas of focus. We, we, we clustered those things into a couple things, offerings, tools and, tech, tools and techniques, market eminence, community aspect and strategy. It allowed us to kind of develop the clusters and pods into pod squads 2.0, which is our value stream. Not only has this affected our capability of process MBA in North Highland, it, it has impacted the entire firm because now organ most of the, um, the capabilities are following this model where we're fo you're focused on the offerings, the tools and techniques, market eminence, community aspect and strategy. And it has allowed us to kind of focus on our people. It allowed new leaders to kind of step up and get embedded into it. As you can see, we had three high level offerings such as intelligent automation, process and operations and business analysis. Under business analysis, we have a sub value stream called bi um, business architecture that allows that area of focus as well. And one of the biggest things that I believe Mr. Leopold asked the question is like, he wanted to learn a little bit about tools and techniques. Well, what we did was the first step was having that partnership with the IIBA. We became a corporate member um, of the, of one, uh, I guess one of 300 plus organizations that have this membership where not only are we in tune with the IIBA, we understand all the tools and techniques that have come out from their perspective that we can leverage and share with our teams because now everybody within the firm in North Highland has to have that connection to the IIBA and has access to the website and things of that nature. This goes into learning and skills development, which we wanted to make sure that our BAs, based off our new BA framework, were aligned to how we do business effectively, not just in the States, not just in the UK, not just in other different locations that we're working together as a team with one format, one framework that we follow together and which you have done that. And one of the biggest things that, you know, we had a challenge with 
was people being, being able to talk, tell their stories. Market eminence is a connection to this topic that we're talking about today, the thought leadership, being that Will, myself, and Shane are high level um, uh, advisors within the firm of where we think the organization and capability should go from our perspective. That goes the same thing with Heather Peets and other folks that's on this call, is that you have the ability to step back, right? And having the ability to do that, you now have an opportunity to tell your story. How did you guys, what did you guys do? What did we do with our client? What did we do internally to allow us to be successful? And having the approach of the value streams and having the approach of the connection and, and getting all these ideas addressed, we've had the ability to have that definition of backlog to kind of see what we're talking about, to see how to be successful. And that also relates to not just the work we do, our people. One of the biggest pieces about North Highland is the people that we work with. And the people that know me on this call that's not at North Highland and in North Highland, you know me, it's about the people. That's how we grow because the, be the best piece of business and innovation and ideas is the human capital of those people bringing the ideas to the forefront. That goes from the community aspect, how we lead our sessions and our meetings together, and what are we, what are we educating our folks with, what, what's going on in the business, what can we do better, what can we learn from. Not to mention some of that, that section from that capability, that value stream of internal community and capability, which I used to be a leader for, we focus in recognition and feedback. What are we doing for our people when they're doing great work we, what we do, we basically implemented a new opportunity, a new uh, area called Friday shout outs, where we're calling people out, which has trickled into the capability, which then trickled out into the firm, where now we have a national global um, uh, uh, shout out for, for people doing great jobs in the firm, which has resulted from things that we were doing. And one of the biggest pieces about North Highland and our, in our, in what we're embedded with is a coaching structure that is like no other that I have ever been within the business is that we really focus on our coaching. We basically have our leaders, myself, Will, Heather, and other folks on this call, our coaches, as well as coachees, that we share the knowledge that we have to help people move up in their career and the experience that they face and the challenges they may face and how to do it the right way. And one of the biggest pieces of that is that if you can pass knowledge back to your coachee, they can do the same thing when they get a coach a coachee as well. So we tried to make sure that 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 thread, that common thread is there. And it has allowed us to be more focused and align across our company that we know where we want to be in business with and the people that we deal with, as well as train them to be the, the consultants that they are. And, you know, as we think about strategy, we focus on that too. And we'll mention that, you know, you have a UK perspective, you have a US perspective, right? There's business with different it's handled different ways. And by doing so, it has allowed us to kind of have that story told consistently. Of course, there's going to be these intricacies and changes that may be different because of locale, but we have one common thread and one common story that we have been able to leverage to success in the last year, especially with COVID and how that had changed our industry, right? We haven't had the ability to really pivot, develop our, our foundation and have that structure in this time virtually that we could bring back to our to our employees and everybody internally as well as externally for our consultants. And as we think about running and growing, it's building the, the, the it's, be, it's being able to adapt to the changes and having the ability that we'll talk about in our next slide is the ability of our innovation and transformation um, framework. And mainly, you know, there's if you want to hear a little bit more about North Highland's background and our, our and our capabilities of Process MBA, there's a link in here for further reading. But this is kind of gives you a view. Not only is Process MBA like this, which you're seeing on the screen, other capabilities such as our program and project management, our change management group, our strategy group, all follow something very similar to this nature, where those five key areas are consistent across the board that we can now talk to that in the same way that we can across the board because we have one tool, JIRA, that tracks everything across the board that we can kind of see what's going on and how they are interlinked. Does anybody have any questions about that? I was just going to add to that, John. I was going to say, mm -hmm. what I was talking about with squad stuff, it was very much precursor to value streams, wasn't it? And so our PPM or project, man projects and program management um, capability, we're doing something very similar. Mm -hmm. But this almost acted as a foundation for where we are now as a business. Um, and I think what we didn't touch on as well was since we put this structure in place, I mean, it's visible and it's measurable as well that we have been able to deliver ideas and initiatives at a far faster pace as well. Mm -hmm. And again, as we both touched on earlier as well, engagement across the company has, and particularly within our capabilities, is increased massively, hasn't it? Mm -hmm. uh, 
I think you, you called out earlier, John, it's new leaders have come through as well, rather than just it being groups with a handful of people that are always keen and proactive to get involved in stuff. Mm -hmm. I think is the majority of our community are now aligned to one of these value streams. So people are truly empowered. And people, people, people are trying to fight to get into the value stream. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> It's an application process now. Yeah. Well this, um... and, I, and I think that, you know, you know, we'll just hit it that, you know, we have so many ideas that kind of come through, but it, it's been, it's been, in, it's been enlightening for us because the, to see people grow into their role, um, either relatively new or senior, to kind of see them have an opportunity to kind of be into something that they're really interested in, to see them, re to see the results that trigger from that, that now they're aligned to opportunities that they, it's in their sweet spot that now they can bring the value where you don't need a John, Will, Heather that have been here a while that know everything right now. You kind of spread the wealth where everybody is now it's manageable. And, you know, Heather be, and I'm going to call it because her pictures on my face while she's on vacation um, is also an opportunity for her as she's responsible for our tools and techniques. One of the things that Heather saw was that we had so many tools and techniques that were either outdated or duplicative that she had the opportunity to look at what we've had and kind of streamline that down into building a consultant toolkit where now new employees come aboard, they look at the opportunities, see the different tools and techniques and leverage what's there. And they only have one version, if not two, depending on specific scenarios. Heather, would you like to add anything to that, what you've seen on our tools and techniques value stream? Uh, so I would say the one, the one thing that we learned most is to coordinate and collaborate early and do it often, do it with as many other of value streams or small groups uh, within your organization as you can, because in a lot of cases, I think people weren't aware of the overlap. And, um, you know, what we're finding is that I should probably be on video, but the same way, um, the same way people don't necessarily align to just one title or one capability, our organizations don't either. So just start those conversations, start the collaboration, and you, you might be surprised at how much you can save time and energy for everybody by just putting a little uh, extra coordination in up front. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we have somebody from another capability, Ms. Courtney Albert, would you like to kind of share what you guys have done in, in change management um, within the value streams that you've been aligned to? Yeah, go ahead and go to the next slide. Here goes the next slide. Okay. I do have a, a question from, uh, from uh, Trent uh, Leopold. Can you relate in general how the BA role interfaces with PM and change management uh, in your organization? We and I, and, I, and I was responding is that we are we are aligned by capability, so we are actually embedded because of the structure. Now we have the ability to kind of link into every one of the capabilities based off of the, the, the decisions and the, and the and the way that we're doing business. So we're we're very closely aligned to how we do work as well as how they do work, and we have these cross collaborative sessions between capabilities to know what they're doing, what we're doing, and we're all in sync from that perspective. Like, Will, is there anything that I'm missing on that one? Yeah, I was, I was gonna say just to add to that as well, is we have um, sort of a matrix structure where we have capabilities which are based on disciplines. So say business analysis, or we'll say process and business analysis, um, change management, project, project management, um, but we also have our services and offerings as well. Um, services and service and offerings um, could be things such as digital transformation or agile transformation and those services are then supplemented by the people within those capabilities so that's then what we take to market mm -hmm. yep and i think you know from that perspective and and um you know to look at what look at the screen right now this is you know our 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 transformation innovation framework that we have in north highland and it's based off in five key areas and i think you know, having the ability to define and align to what a little bit pulling back what Will mentioned earlier, the precursor of the pods and squads is, you know, what are we aligned to? Like, what are we trying to do? Like, define the problem, align what we're trying to do, and it brings everything kind of to the forefront of, of identifying your ideas, right? And I think when you sit there and think about from define and align and you move over to value, what, what's really the value to our employees and our customers? What are we thinking about for us to move forward, to allow us to be successful. I think when you think about from it, not only do we sell these um, services to our clients, we have we practice what we preach internally and making sure that we can provide value back to our employees internally on our side to make sure that one, they're in tune to what we're doing, but also aligned to where the organization is going. 
And by doing that, we've had to design and the we had to design the, the format, the framework. So what you see regarding the precursor of the pods and squads to value stream, we help design that, right? So, and that is the way that we do internal perspective, but from an in external perspective, we wanna make sure that we can provide the value in the way how things should work. That is going in there from a change management perspective, a business analysis perspective, program and project management perspective, having the ability to understand what's gonna allow us to get there. What does the future look like? And as you know, with the COVID experience, it's changed our way of workings, right? You know, there's opportunities that Will and I have an opportunity to work, like I mentioned earlier, that we can work on projects that doesn't necessarily have to be in our locale anymore. So we're designing the opportunity where you have the resources in one spot. And now, now maybe London may have an opportunity to pull me on a project that they need that would align to that. And the same thing in the US, Will and Shane or, or anybody in the UK can get pulled into for, based off of their skill set. And we designed that future because we want our we want our resources to be all able to be able to be successful and also have the resources to be successful. And if you have the plan, we can execute on that plan time in and time out. Again, and having the ability to deliver those ideas is having the ability to realize the structure that we built and put in place has the ability for us to result in something very, very good for our organization because we've had the ability to measure and adapt. We've had the ability to look at the game plan of what the consulting industry was looking at at right now. And I have some of my my peers on the phone on the on this call where you see changes and organizations have been able to pivot. Some organizations didn't make it. We were able to pivot in 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 a few weeks of, to make a, 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 a consultancy that would expect resources on site every time to points of having consultants in virtual environment and still being successful or maybe even being more successful on tip on specific projects. So things of that nature, that that's what we look from a strategic perspective when we step back and think about how can we apply internally what we're doing to our clients and vice versa, because it allows us to step back and really truly bring those ideas out structure them and execute on them. And we'll talk a little bit more on our next slide, if you go well, is to the point of, of how we deliver on those ideas. And as you'll see on the North Highland perspective, you can go ahead, um, we, we deliver ideas in specific ways. We adhere to our agile principles. We have multiple, we have amazing agile coaches within North Highland that have structured an agile, agile mindset in our curriculum where we have multiple classes that we all should be taking learning how to be a scrub, a scrum master how to be a product owner product manager and building those skill set that we can start coaching and being um senior leaders in the agile space it's something that has transformed our organization to, to great success that has allowed us to kind of leverage some of the scrum principles as well that, that allow us to kind of step back think about how we plan certain things and what we need to get what those goals and objectives are we, we challenge ourselves. We, not, we, we don't just say one thing and just be okay with it. We challenge ourselves in our scrum of scrums where we bring all the scrum masters together and kind of talk about what was the good, bad, and ugly from that time period and what we can do better. Not only does it step back to allow us to view what people are doing, it also gives people ideas of what they can bring to their value stream. And that has allowed it to result where it's collaboration, effective collaboration that has bred creativity that has allowed us to have our wins, have our losses, but have losses that kind of flip them to make them wins down the line with a few tweaks. And it has resulted in great retrospective, retrospectives that allowed us to learn from each other to get better. Um, we, we've done things from a, that's from the agile perspective. When we kind of unify and bring everybody together, like I said, like we just talked about, you have people fighting to get in a specific value stream, not fighting, like, but literally they want to be in a specific value stream to provide value, right? So if you don't have the opportunity to go into one value stream, you can go to another area, provide value stream and come back down the line. And what we've done is embedded that into our discussion where we started rotating scrum masters in our organization, in our value streams to bring value, different leadership skills that let also provide them that, that overview and oversight for that capability and for that value stream. And then it, it has allowed us to drive new ideas and those new ideas have a, de a defined and developed backlog of ideas that we can break down that has prioritized our business model internally from a six month rest um, a six month period of providing areas to identify those backlog items into. So something right now, six months down the line or the next quarter. And we've had the ability to execute effectively. And the only way we can do that is by aligning to our corporate and firm strategy as well as our capability. Because if we don't have any alignment, everything 
result revolves on traceability. As a business analyst, that's something that's important to everybody on this call. So having the ability to have that alignment allows you to kind of connect to your ideas and things that you want to bring to the table that allows you to see the long run. And it has allowed guiding principles to enlighten our people that they understand the big picture. They build trust with their teammates and, and, the, and people within the firm. We are able to track decisions in, in a tool such as JIRA across the board from an enterprise level. We utilize visual, aid, visual aids and one of our amazing colleagues, Mr. Ross Capel, who's also a great um, member of the IIBA, you know, a picture paints a thousand words, right? He wrote, a, he wrote a thought piece about that because it's the truth, because sometimes people don't read all the text, sometimes visuals help. And then having the ability to maintain an open mind, we've all had. There's times that Will and I have ideas when we disagree or we, or we agree, but he pushes me, I push him, we push each other, right? And we've gotten better from that. And in situation of that, it has resulted in not just me and Will or Shane going through this, it's, in, it's involved our entire organization to have that push and pull because we've all gotten better together and we move forward. And Will, would you like to add anything to that? Yeah, I was, there was just one thing I was going to add. It was a point you said earlier about um, when you're talking about sort of rotating roles from a scrum master or PO, and it, it's something that resonates with me, which is actually by having this structure, and because it's all very, it's all internal, fo internally focused, actually gives us a safe environment, doesn't it, to test ideas. And I mean, failure is, I won't say embraced, but it's, it's accepted because obviously not all the ideas are going to be great. Mm -hmm. um, by having this space, it gives people the confidence or it allows them to build their confidence and allows them to build the experience and skills they've not had. Um, I think that's, uh, that's my main point. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Does anybody have any questions about delivering ideas that's on the call? Don't be, don't be shy. We're here learning together. Yep. We have a question from Philippe. What is, yes. the rough, what is the rough rate between success and failures? That's a good one. Um, you know, I, I think from what I've seen in, the, in our time since doing it and how we, when we track them, the, the, I would sit there and say that if you sit, we've had, I think, 140 in the backlog. I remember at one point, um, and because of the breakdown by quarters, I think the level, it depends on what can be done in that period, Philippe. So, you know, you may list out a bunch of them that may be like 20 or so for one specific value stream. And say, for example, you look at the, the timeline and say, you know what, we can do this, but this needs to be put first. I don't consider that failure rate of, okay, we didn't get it in now, but we can get it in later, but we have to have the foundation. So I can't give you a percentage, but I've seen the, put it like this, the, the what I've seen thus far, it has been um, a transformative period where the ideas may not be executed at that time, but they will be executed before the end of the year. So it just gets kind of pushed down based off of the sprint. I think we, we've got be better at measuring stuff when we first started this mm -hmm. off. Um, it, was, it was more, some of the changes were noticeable, but as we've got more mature in sort of um, well, developing our, implementing and developing our structure and how we actually run it, um, we have got far better at measuring stuff. Mm -hmm. And, you know, Mr. Leopold, the, the, the idea um, of what you have there is like you ask, well, how do we make our, our retros fun? We are an organiz <laughs> organization that we have. We utilize tools such as Mural and Mural, which is the one that we're using now, which is M-I-R-O and then Mural, M-U-R-A-L, that we have templates put together um, that are, are strictly utilized for collaboration and effective collaboration for learning how we can do business better internally and externally. So Mural has been a very big proponent of, of our success. Well, for some of us, Myra. And then Mindy said, Retro, start with the warm up. I sent her the question around a weird holiday of the day. Carry <laughs> <laughs> on. All right, next one. So when do you use Mural instead of Mural? Um, uh, that's right, that's more, you take that one, more you take personal that one. <laughs> Sorry, you go for it, John. I, that's just preference. I, I think Mural has been great. Um, I've learned, I learned Mural from, from Will. So this, this tool itself is, is very collaborative as well. So I think it depends on what your organization has. And if it's something that you guys want, I think it's something to add into your toolkit. Um, but Mural and, My, and Myro, they have their, they have their intricacies as every, every application does. But um, I, I utilize Mural for like our collaboration sessions, planning sessions, 
um, strategy sessions and mural kind of same thing. You can utilize it for 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 creation of of uh, ideas to kind of bring forth. And I think of... they're, they're very similar. It's much of a muchness. Um, it's Dan's personal preference. John likes mural. I like, I like mural. Shall we move on to the next slide? Yes, sir. Is it, we have got about eleven minutes. 11 minutes. Yep. Yeah. So here's some things that have been, you know, our, our quick outputs and, and benefits from what we've seen within our ideas into excellence with our value streams. Um, we've had the opportunity, as, as um, Will mentioned, the implementation of ideas and initiatives that have measurably increased, which has seen great, great, great progress in our firm and push forward. Um, we are a capability seen at, at a very high level of how we structured our value streams. Um, as very important and very um, influential because it has triggered other capabilities to follow our lead, which has been great because we learn from each other, but uh, we push each other at the same time. Um, we've enhanced our BA framework, as we talked about. We, we developed a, a, a perspective that's consistent to how we do business internally, as well as we provide value to our clients. Um, we talked about empowering, um, we've empowered our communities to and, and organization to make clear decisions and have a great strategy um, things that we've done. Uh, we, one of the coolest things that we've done is that we kicked off last year. We not only kicked off our BA framework, but we announced it at our first annual business analysis um, virtual summit. So through the virtual environment, normally we never, we've never had a virtual summit. So it brought everybody from the US, UK um, for three days, 8 a.m. to 12 for three days on different topics. We had multiple discussions on business architecture, process and operation, business analysis, um, you'll sit there and see the, the hot sauce principle where we had our, our, pre, our president of the company, Alex Bombeck. We had an executive coach, Brandon Smith, and Paula Fontana, who's the senior vice president of the National Black MBA Association, um, having a topic about how, how to make things um, for decisions or, or think items urgent, how to deal with it in, in the environment that we were living in. And as you know, we were living in a COVID experience. So this was a prime topic where it was a very good turnout, 100, 100 and 59 people of the 169 were there. Um, great conversation and how to apply those skills and being successful in the virtual environment. And as you can see on the left-hand side, you see Will in his picture with his sunglasses on. He was he was um, awarded one of the Shining Star Awards, one of the first ones provided um, to him because of the work that he's done in the UK and the level of leadership. We would not be in a value stream environment if it wasn't for Will. Will started the idea and the thought process from the pods and the squads and where to the point where I got tune of it and I pulled him in <laughs> and then we kind of, and, and, and the point is we learned so much from each other and how we made things better in the firm that you know we would not be in this framework if it wasn't for Will for a kind of circle and say, hey, let's try it this way because that's the innovation and that's the type of intensiveness that we needed in our firm to make it better. And it has allowed us to have greater alignment across our firm. Um, yeah, has, I was going to say we can't we can't forget Shane as well. Obviously. Yeah, absolutely, and Shane as well. Yeah, and I, I think as well without this structure as well. I mean, we called ourselves a global company, didn't we? But it was very much this is what we do in the UK, this is what we do in the US. Um, by having this structure, it's actually truly allowed us to sort of become more of a global company. Um, so yeah, I think until this, it's uh, we didn't cross paths too often, did we, John? But now. Oh. Yeah, and 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 that's what it changed. It changed. It changed the narrative. It truly changed yeah, the narrative of, of the communication of what was what. And UK does this, US does this. Now we we do it together. And I think it's the best thing. I think people are learning the opportunity. And and, and Will's going to talk a little bit about some of the encouraging innovation. Yeah, I'll I'll try and speed up as well because I, I didn't think I thought we'd uh, still have a good amount of time. Actually, um, we managed to do our old trick of speaking so much. Yeah, um, but it's, it's okay. It's okay. You can continue. Oh, you're awesome. Thank you, Christoph. Yeah. Um, so we're, we're near the end of the um, presentation anyway. So um, I suppose we'll leave any more questions until the end so we can just get through the last slides. Um, so as I said, when we we're kicking off as well, we wanted to talk through the journey, which hopefully um, we've conveyed properly. But we also wanted to talk around some of these softer things as well, such as how do you embed innovation? Um, and how do you create an environment of, um, or an open environment that welcomes feedback? Um, so I put a little link down here as well for further reading, just some very basic steps on how you can embed innovation. But what really resonates with, um, with John and I as well is these points. Um, so I think the first one is set aside time to think for yourself. 
um, if you don't have this time, how are you going to be able to generate ideas? Um, I think we're probably all used to back-to-back -back meetings now um, in the virtual world, thanks to COVID. But I found, and I'm sure it's probably the same for you as well, John, is actually trying to free up time where you can actually have time to think and sort of generate ideas. Without that, as I said before, you're not going to have ideas. Um, I won't labour the next point um, because John has covered that, um, which is, see, and Heather did earlier, which is encourage conversation, collaboration, have this early on. Um, I mean, any communication, whether it's small or large, is important. Make sure people are aligned. Um, again, the point, um, third point, embrace failure and encourage risk. It's what I talked about earlier, and it's what our structure that we've talked through um, helps encourage as well. It gives people that confidence to try new things, to take risks. Um, Again, what the structure should have emphasised as well is start small and make incremental changes. I mean, the Scrum Agile framework, um, this naturally encourages this. So that's one of the reasons why we went down that route. Focus on building momentum. Again, relates back to the previous point, having manageable sort of small chunks of work that's enabled us to increase that sort of velocity that we deliver at work, that we deliver at. So in turn, that's allowed us to have momentum to continuously improve and deliver um, initiatives um, and as we've emphasized throughout bring everyone along on the journey um, you've got to have the entire community bought in i mean what's the point doing something if it's in a small group and it's going to be put down on people top down mm -hmm. so it's i suppose it's more about change management isn't it it's how do you get people bought in simple mm -hmm. let them have an input I think you're absolutely right. Um, sorry, John, I realised I took over. Like, it's okay, it's, it's okay. Go ahead. Cool. I, yeah, so the last one is just like, you know, the feedback and openness. And I, I think today's session kind of kind of talk, kind of shared the opportunity what we do um, from our perspective and, and kind of build those ideas. And I think working collaboratively and having that openness and that feedback, you know, um, we we were supposed to have this meeting a couple of weeks back, right? And, you know, we wanted to keep on tinkering it to make it better. And one of the things that we did utilize, and we talked about Mural, we, uh, Mural, we utilized Mural to kind of ideate and think about the things of how this structure was going to go. And we wanted to make sure it was it was clean. And we, we shared, we, one of the biggest pieces is asking for open feedback, getting some challenges, have the opportunity to think about um, what to do better and we wanted to make sure that story and that thread was being told and I think the biggest thing is making sure that all feedback is constructive right and I think we get better from that and I think you know Will and myself like I said we challenge each other what we what we're looking at and trying to tell that story but when we when we align and form like Voltron it's just really it's it's a point of 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 a success for us because not only he has a perspective I have a perspective and and once it aligns to the story of what we're trying to tell it works, right? And I think that's what organizations need to do and have that ability for that feeling of open feedback, right? I think once you develop that and get that feedback and recognition, that transparency results. And from that perspective, being honest and what the expectations are, it brings priorities and brings capacity for you to manage. And I, I'm, I'm blessed that you guys had the opportunity to allow Will, myself and Shane um, virtually um, and mentally here to kind of talk about what we talked about today. And I hopefully, um, you know, hopefully it brings questions can you know things that you have had questions on that has answered and if there's things that you want to talk more about feel free um to reach out but i thank you very much tom i'm going to pass it to my good buddy will yeah and hopefully uh there's lots of good stuff people can take away from this um and just on, on the feedback as well um, i mean obviously we've got a few points here but i think there's sort of two essential things really it's creating forms and mechanisms for people to give feedback but it's also having that behavior as well. Um, and I think the talk John and I have given and the structures we've outlined, um, I think within our organization, we have enabled this. Um, it has enabled us to sort of generate ideas effectively and deliver upon them. Um, and on that note, I think that's, uh, that's time for us to wrap up. Okay, final slide. So um, as John said, Thank you for giving us a chance to speak here. Um, it's been an absolute pleasure. Um, and we'll now open up the floor um, for any questions. So if anyone has any. You got two minutes. <laughs> <laughs>
my lunch is ready. <laughs> <laughs> we we might we might do we might do some a bit more than uh, than two minutes if, if that's okay for you that's guys. Cool. Yeah, that's, uh, that's cool. I have a I have a, a question. Uh, um, what are some of the key indicators that you have uh, been successful to? There, our key indicators are, have been tried and aligned to one's goals. So we, what we do is track internally to what the ideas and you being a significant contributor to a value stream. And our focus is not, um, you know, it's the outcomes, right? What has resulted into it. And I think that's the way leadership looks at it from our, in our capability. Um, and it has allowed us to kind of step back and, and, and seeing what people are a part of and how, what, what value they're bringing to us. Okay. Thank you. I think um, one of the measures as well was actually the pace we're delivering at, um, which we did allude to earlier, which was we had a massive backlog. It was going very, very slowly. Whereas actually we can measure now um, based on the month's prints we run, um, what is being delivered. Um, and obviously some things will be smaller, some things will be larger, but we can actually see what's delivered and the amount of things. Okay, thank you. Uh, anybody else who has a, a question? Um, I was wondering how much time do people get or take uh, to spend on innovation? <laughs> that's funny. Um, that's funny because we had a... a we were, we were all working, um, you know, of course we have our 40 hours a week or so, um, but we would, I would sit there and say we were averaging probably a good point of three to four hours extra a week, maybe a little bit more to the point where people were doing so much that leadership kind of told us to kind of slow down a little bit, um, <laughs> which has resulted in actually people taking a quick break, mental break to come back and they are adding things to the backlog. So they, ideas that they may popped up with and added it to, but you know, honestly, I would sit there and say a good three to four hours. We would have, I know we'd have our scrum master meeting that real would run on our capability, our, our value stream. Um, we would have our scrum of scrum. So that's two. We would have our retro, that's three. And then any internal meetings that we would have a week, bi-weekly. So it, it was to the point three to four weeks about, right, Will? Yeah, it was. Um, as you said, we've had this sort of directive to slow down a bit. Um, yeah, there, there was... Uh, I think people got very keen and there was a big focus on getting involved and delivering stuff. Um, so yeah, we've been told to slow down a tad. So I suppose the answer was, um, yes, we spent a good deal of time <laughs> ideas and trying to innovate. Cool, I can see something in the chat. Um, anybody else has to, has some questions, maybe? Uh, maybe I have another question. Um, to what extent can you apply all the innovative tools, techniques, approaches that you come up with, uh, with your clients? Are they always open to it? Are they reluctant? So I, I think some of this is we very much applied some of these tools and techniques to our clients. And I think the problem maybe previously was we weren't necessarily doing what we were preaching to our clients. So it's taking what we take to market, some of the things we recommend to our clients and actually eat, well, taking our own medicine really. Um, and say for example, the transformation framework that John showed earlier in one of the slides, that's very much what we apply to our clients as well. So again, fitting with that, it's we apply it to our clients, but we apply it to ourselves. So everything, the framework we talk through the squads and value streams is designed to enhance our offerings um, and what we ultimately take to our clients. Because as a consultancy firm, that's our bread and butter. And are they typically open to it or uh, do you sometimes have to, yeah slow your consultants down in their it, eagerness to try out it, new things? I, I think it really depends on the client. Yep. My current client, um, they're a global publishing company. Um, you can suggest things to them. Um, and I've tried taking some of the things we've taken through and to them because they're trying to build up practices within business analysis, project management, change management. Um, but for them, they are very immature, I'd say, in 
terms of sort of consultancy disciplines. So it's very much slowly, slowly giving them incremental sort of tips on how to build this and advice rather than going for sort of a big bang approach. Yeah, I've, I've seen it. I've seen it in a couple of ways where the, once we had announced the BA framework at the um, at the, the, for the first summit, I got an opportunity with my capability lead and some other folks to kind of present it to a couple of clients. Well, now a couple of clients didn't really have a BA perspective and framework. So they allowed us to come in there and have the idea in which they, they love. But you also had those that had a BA framework and like kind of figure this out. And we just kind of intertwine of like, we can do it this way, but the value is going to come from here. And we kind of do a, a blend, but there's some times that you may get like follow this way type of thing. So we've been able to, to tap dance a bit, but overall we've been very successful with having our approach solid to the point where, and I, you know, speaking on organizations being connected to IIBA, that has been a very big proponent to that, right? And they, when they sit there and say, you know, you're attached to the governing body of business analysis, it does give you that extra oomph where it shows that connection and that importance that your BAs are following and adhering to what that is going to the BABOC and the different processes in place and how we align our work. I, I guess the final point on that as well, it's completely dependent on the maturity of organizations. Yes, yep. yep. Um, Whereas where I'd been before was a very mature organization, had defined capabilities, used to working with consultancies, whereas where I currently am, um, I think I was the first ever um, BA to land there. Um, so trying to implement a BA framework. By um, yourself. <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, it's an arduous task. But you've got okay, to start thanks. somewhere. Okay. Uh, I don't see any more uh, questions. Um, I would like to thank you guys uh, for this uh, interesting session. Um, the presentation slides, they will be uh, sent out afterwards. Uh, in name of the IIBA Brussels chapter, we would like to each speaker of this uh, certification of uh, appreciation. And uh, before we close up tonight, uh, we would like to ask you some feedback uh, on our sessions. So uh, you can uh, go quickly to this uh, session and give uh, your opinion on this one. In the meantime, I can already see. And, and Christoph, one of the, one of yeah. the, I'll add this before we go, is that um, yeah. one of the biggest things that you know we've seen success with is that you had that community of practice in organizations. So if you have, if you're working in making sure you can bring the value. So I think a couple of people asked about tools and techniques, having the community mm -hmm. of practice and the ideas of what your approach is and the techniques, bringing everybody together allows that, allows that value stream centric type of angle, which allows mm -hmm. you to pull some of that content together for you as well. So I know somebody, folks asked about it. So hopefully that can provide some value to you. Okay. Thanks a lot. So I see that uh, some people are, uh, sending us uh, some feedback on, on the session. So thank you very much for that. Um, so um, yeah, uh, before I forget, by attending this session, you are rewarded by one CDU, which can be used for IBA recertification. And in order to prove your attendance, you will need to save the wrap up email, which will be sent out afterwards with all the information, slides and, uh, and everything. Uh, next to our weekly online BA Cafe, where you can know BAs from all over the world in an informal chat, uh, we have uh, a webinar from Marcus Judekang on the communication at the end of next month. Uh, and we have an upcoming session later this year about the nine principles of requirements engineering. Um, I think uh, that's it uh, for tonight. Uh, thank you all for attending. And uh, I hope that uh, we can be, uh, see you another time. Thank you very thanks much. Thanks a lot again, John Great. and Will. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye. Thank you very much, Christoph. Thank Bye. you, everyone. Bye. Have a lovely evening. You too.